In the previous class, I explained about perceptron. So, perceptron was a single layer artificial neural network. So, by using a perceptron, we were able to calculate the or find out the weights. So, but the drawback of the perceptron was here you can see the drawback of the perceptron the drawback of the perceptron it is we can apply perceptron only when there is a linearly separable so suppose i had given the example of this the positive and the negative sign so here you can see that if, if i draw any linear line so it is going to separate the positive to one side and the negative sign to the other side so this is a line so it separates linearly separates the positive and the negative sign whereas this example so even though if i draw a linear line in any direction so it is not going to separate the positive and the negative symbols so that's why it is called as it is non-linearly separable so now this is a drawback of a perceptron so as i told perceptron is a single layer artificial neural network there is no hidden layers so perceptron it is a kind of a method which is used to find out the weights so here we are using a method of linearly separable when the samples so these are the samples or you can consider it as a database so if the database are linearly separable depending on that we are going to make a decision that is three positive and three negative i have so depending on this i can make a decision so that is a perceptron so now the drawback of a perceptron is linearly it can be applied only on a linearly separable so to overcome that drawback for in order to find the weight for a non non linearly separable we go for delta rule we go for the delta rule the key idea behind the delta rule is to use a gradient descent to search the hypothesis space of possible weight vector to find the weights that best fit the training example so we know already while explaining in the class in the regular class i explained about the gradient descent method along with an linear regression and a logistic regression so the same gradient descent method along with the delta rule it is going to be used to find out the weights when it is a non-linearly separable samples so let's see what is meant by an gradient descent before that understand what is meant by a weight i already explained in an artificial neural network if i revise the structure of an artificial neural network so this is a structure of an artificial neural network where you will be having an input along with the inputs you will be having a weight so the multiplication of an input and the weight along with the summation of an each of the input samples it is going to give you an output bias now the output bias it is given to an any activation function so depending upon the activation function we are going to get the output as 0 or 1 the activation function can be used any ways that is a step function we can use sigmoid function you can we can use so uh, any of the activation functions we can use so this is a structure of an artificial neural network this is just for the revision part so weights weights are nothing but it uh, it is a parameter which is used to indicate the strength of an input signal so weight is a parameter which in turn indicates the strength of the input signal in terms of a number now we are we are going to find this weight so i already explained the first method of finding the weight the first method of finding the weight it is through a perceptron the second method of finding the weight now it is through a delta rule so that is we are discussing now so delta rule along with an gradient descent so gradient it is nothing but a change in a value or a small changes in a value descent it is nothing but a decrease in a value so means a decrease in terms of steps now what you are going to decrease in terms of steps so we are going to decrease an error in terms of a gradient in terms of a small steps that is called as gradient descent 
so gradient descent it is gradient it is nothing but a small step and a descent is nothing but decrease in the value so gradient descent it is nothing but what we are going to decrease here in the senses error we are going to decrease so gradient descent it is an decrease in an error in smaller steps so that we can get a best fit weight for a training example now what is this hypothesis space hypothesis space it is nothing but uh, many or it is a collection of many hypotheses so hypothesis space it is a collection of many hypotheses now in turn it is a collection of many such predicted values so every time we are going to predict a value we are going to predict the weight here with a decrease in step by step of an error so that we create an many hypothesis space and from that many hypothesis space we are going to select one hypothesis space where we get an a good value or the perfect value or the best value of a weight that suits our training example with a minimum error so this is a meaning of a gradient descent that is applied to a delta rule so now let's see along with the example so since i had already explained in the class i'll explain it again so here you can see this is a mountain peak i have now the person who is present on the top of the peak he can he can come down in this way or he can come down in this way so he has two paths if he come down in this way he has to follow many peaks means he has to decrease again again he has to increase again he has to decrease so he has to follow many steps whereas if a person comes down in this path he has to follow only one step so now if i consider this is an analogy of a person now if i consider the same thing with an example i have here the circles and i have a triangle now i have to separate the triangle and the circles so what is the method i'll do so i'll apply here a linear i'll try to draw a linear line so this is a solid line as a, as i have drawn here it is a first line i'll try it this is a trial and error method i'll draw a line and i'll check whether it is linearly separable so here we can see that it is not linearly separable so the triangles and circles are not separate uh, separable so again i'll try with a different line again i'll try in this direction so every time i'm keep on trying along with the trying i'll calculate when i draw a linear line i'll calculate the distance of this linear line with the triangle the distance of this linear line with a circle so that you can observe it in a arrow head so this helps to find me the error so i'll draw a linear line i'll draw a straight line i'll try to separate it since it is not separable then what we have to find the error so how the error is found out it is a different difference between the or the distance between the uh, position of the linear line to that of the sample so I, this is called as my error so error is nothing but the target value minus the predicted value so target value is what target value is a linear line so predicted value is how much distance is that that is a triangle so that is going to give me the error so every time i'll try to do this and i'll try to minimize the error so that i'll get the best fit now in which direction i have to draw the linear line so whether i have to draw in left side or whether i have to draw from the right side so as you see the mountain peaks here towards the left side so you can see that you have many peaks whereas to the right side we have only one peak and it is easy to get it down so now we try to put a line towards the left and try to find out the error how the error is found out it is through the distance so distance from that linear line to the position of the sample the position of the sample here is triangle so you can see that arrow so that is going to give me the error so uh, 
again I'll draw a line towards the left side and I'll try to find but if I draw a line towards my right side and I'll try this my error will be reduced when compared to the left side so then I'll conclude that yes the person has to move towards the right side rather than to the left side and the person will start moving towards his right side in the sense we have to draw the linear line towards the right side and then try to find out the error so this is known as gradient descent gradient in the sense it is the smallest decrease or the smallest change descent is stepping down stepping down in what sense error we are reducing so reducing the error in smaller steps is known as gradient descent so this gradient descent rule we are going to apply it to the delta rule now so let's see the ppt here you can see that to understand the delta rule consider the task of training an unthreshold perceptron so we have to train the perceptron now so for that we are going to consider the diagram of an artificial neural network so you can see here this is a diagram of an artificial neural network so we have an inputs x1 x2 here the weights are not defined so we have an intermediate layer that is the first hidden layer second hidden layer followed by the final output layer so we are going to find the weights for this neural network so in gradient descent method what is how to find out the weight so here we are going to choose the random weight randomly we are going to choose the weight so how the gradient descent work randomly some line i have drawn here linear line and i am trying to find out the error so which line is giving me less error i am going to choose that line the same way here in a delta rule we here uh, we are going to choose the weight randomly and then we are going to find out the error so how so x1 into w1 i am going to find out and finally i am going to get the output and then i am going to find the error how the error is found out error is found out by this formula that is e of w vector so what is a vector here that is a weight vector that is starting from w0 to wn so error of a w vector it is equals to half of summation d belonging to capital d td minus od the whole square so uh, is as i already told earlier error it is nothing but the difference between the targeted value minus the predicted value in simple sense so that is going to be my error what is the main intention here the main intention in the machine learning is whatever i am predicting it should be near to my exact value whatever the hypothesis i am doing it should be near to my exact value it is near to my it should be near to my target value target function so that is a main agenda here how that is possible when we minimize the error at that time the tar uh, the predicted value that is my ot it becomes equal to an td at that time my error will be zero and that time i'll say that it is a perfect prediction so that is a main agenda here correct so now the error it is given by a formula that is e of w vector it is equals to half summation of d belonging to capital d td minus od so what is small d small d uh, we know that it is a training example each and every training example so what is capital d it is a complete data set where it consists of many training examples next what is td td it is a target output for a particular training example so if we see the example of a database of an enjoy sport as i explained in class the complete row and column it is going to be capital d whereas if i consider one particular row of that second row or the third row then it is my training examples that is small d if i consider td that is a target output that is yes or no of that particular row it is going to be td whereas od it is the output of a linear unit for a training example d 
output of a linear unit in the sense it is nothing but a predicted value or it is nothing but for a single perceptron since we have assumed here an unthreshold perceptron it is for a single perceptron value so what is a so as of now so what is the gradient descent and delta rule so gradient descent and delta rule so in the previous method that is a drawback of a perceptron where we can find out the value of a weight only when it is a linearly separable samples so that was a drawback of a perceptron for that we move to the next method that is a gradient descent and the delta rule in a gradient descent and the delta rule the main idea of a delta rule is we are going to use a gradient descent so as a gradient descent it is nothing but it is re reduction or decrease in an or decrease in an error in terms of small steps that is a gradient descent i explained with an example so that is a gradient descent rule now in an gradient descent rule and a delta rule to find out the weight randomly we are choosing some weight and then we are performing an a calculations to get the output of a neural network now if there is an error in an output of a neural network we are going to find out the error by using the formula that is this formula we are going to find out the error and then when there is an error again backtracking is done that is known as a back propagation algorithm that we are going to see in the next topics in the coming topics so again it is going to track back and it is going to alter the weight in terms of smaller steps again we are going to alter the weight and then again the calculations are done to get the output of a neural network again if there is an error again go back and again change the weight update the weight do the calculation calculate the error so this process is continuous until we get the best weight until we get the best output so this process is continuous so this is an gradient descent and the delta rule